look at dilations when they are not centered at the origin. The major difference will be distance from the point of dilation that is the center and any vertex. Here's what I mean. If you consider a regular diagram of a number line and we put some points on the number line, when the center of dilation was at zero, zero, distances were measured between the vertex points and zero. Just like on here where A is at one and B is at four, the distance from A to zero is just one and the distance from B to zero is just four. But the distances when the center is not at zero, zero are more like finding the distances between two points that are not zero. The distance between A and B is the difference between the locations at A and B. So it isn't the same as either of their locations. It's not one, it's not four, it's three. So the difference we're gonna see now is that we cannot use the coordinates as measurements which means we can't multiply by the coordinates to get new coordinates. That just won't work when the center is not zero, zero. So let's see what we're gonna do. Here's a pre-image of A, B, C, and the scale factor is two. The center is at four, four. So let me mark that. There's our center of dilation. In order to find the coordinates of the new points, we're gonna use kind of like rise over run in slope, we're gonna use vertical and horizontal distances to the existing points. Here's what I mean. The point 1, 1, A is down three units, right? Well, the new point A prime is gonna be down twice as far because the scale factors two. So three times two is six, so let's go another three units to double it. This is where the Y coordinate will be now. That's the vertical distance between A prime and the center of dilation. All right, now the horizontal distance will be twice as far as the current horizontal distance. So the current horizontal distance from the center over to A is here. Well, that's also three. If we double that and go six units, one, two, three more, we're gonna get all the way over here. If you match up where those two distances meet, that's gonna be right here. Here is A prime. So the coordinates of A prime are negative two, negative two. Notice that I can't get that by taking the original coordinates and just multiplying by two. Let's erase those marks and find B prime as another example. The horizontal distance over to B is two. Double it. That will be over four. That's the new horizontal distance. How about vertical distance? Right now it's one. We need to double that, it becomes Two. So if you see where those two measurements meet up, B prime is gonna be right here. That looks like one, two. Let's find C prime. Okay, so here's C. The current vertical distance is three. We double that and this is where it's going to be vertically six away from the center. Horizontally, it's actually lined up already. That means the horizontal distance between the center of dilation and C is actually zero. You don't move sideways at all. So the horizontal distance to C prime is also zero. It's not gonna move sideways at all. That means it's just gonna be dropped right here. So that's where C prime is. What are the coordinates? That would be at four, negative two. Okay, notice that the X coordinate has not changed between C and C prime. And these are the coordinates of the new points. You can see A prime is here, B prime, C prime. I will do my best to connect them, even though I do not have a digital ruler. There is our new figure that is twice as big in all its linear measurements and projected away from four, four from the original picture. Let's try another one. Okay, here we've got figure ABC, little triangle down here. We want to find the coordinates of dilation 1.5 if it is centered at 3, negative 5. So let's go over 3 and drop down 5. So here's the center of dilation. The projected image is going to be one and a half times bigger in all of its measurements away from that. So if you kind of imagine this is like a little light bulb shining and it projects a shadow away from the light bulb through the original image to a new image that's one and a half times bigger. So start with point A. Our current point is located right here. All right, the horizontal distance from side to side 
is zero. They're lined up perfectly. So the new image is still going to be lined up perfectly with this measurement right here. Okay. The vertical distance though is one, two, three, four. And one and a half times four is just like one times four plus half again as much. So one and a half fours is four plus two because two is half of four. That's six. So instead of four, we're going to go six. And that is right here. So where those two measurements line up, our new A prime is going to be right there. Okay. Let's try finding B prime. Okay, the horizontal distance from the center over to B is right here. That's a distance of one. If we're gonna do that one and a half times, that's one time and a half. So it's gonna be lined up right here, which is at four and a half on the x-axis. The vertical distance from the center to B is right here. That is two units currently. One and a half times that is two plus one, which is three. So it's gonna be this long lined up here. If you take those two things and line them up, you get a point right here. And so that is where B prime is gonna be. All right, finally, let's find C prime. Currently, the horizontal distance from the center over to C is right here. That's three units. We need one and a half threes, okay? So that's three plus half of three, which would be four and a half. So three, four and a half. It's gonna be lined up right there, which is at negative 1.5, all right? And then the vertical distance from the center to C is just one unit exactly. One and a half times one is one and a half. So go one and a half. That lands right here, which is actually at three and a half, negative three and a half. So if you figure out where those two things are lined up, they're gonna be right there in the middle of that square, right? That's where C prime is. Okay, let's write down our coordinates. A prime is at three, one. B prime is at four and a half down two, and C prime is at negative 1.5, negative 3.5. And so those are the coordinates of our new points. For our final figure, we have something a little more complicated. We have letters like you might dilate for a poster. We need to find the scale factor and also prove that this is the center of dilation. So let's start with the scale factor. There's a few ways to do this. Okay, we could either take any point, let's say B prime, and measure the horizontal distance and the vertical distance over to the center and compare that with its counterpart, measure the entire horizontal distance and the entire vertical distance, okay? If you divide those um, putting B prime distances on top, that will reduce down to the scale factor. Okay, so that's one way to do it. The other way to do it is to take any linear measurement that's easy to measure. And in this case, we have a few. Uh, for example, the distance from B prime to G prime is pretty easy to see, it's one. And the distance from B to G is proportional. So if you look at that, it's two. So it would appear that our scale factor is equal to one half. All right, now we can verify that by looking at any other measurement you wanna check. So let's look at horizontal distances uh, at B prime and B. So the distance from B prime to the center, uh, seven zero, there is no appropriate notation, so I'm making up my own here. Horizontal distance from B prime to seven zero. Let's check that out. And then we're gonna compare it from, uh, with the horizontal distance from regular B to the same point, seven zero, which is the center of dilation, we think. Okay, let's, let's try that. So from B prime over to where D is, we just count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, that makes sense. And from B way over here, let's see, that's out at negative seven, so the distance over to zero would be seven, and then we have seven more, so that would be 14, and that reduces to one half, so that makes sense. If D is truly the center of dilation, then the vertical distances should be in proportion as well.
So let's try the vertical distances from B prime and B. So from B prime, it looks like it is down at one and a half and compare that with the distance from B straight up to the x-axis. That would be a distance of three. If you divide both of those by 1.5, you get one half, which is the same. So since the scale factor comes out the same everywhere, that also shows that D must be the center of dilation. You could show it for any of the other points. That is a quick explanation of scale factors and coordinates where the center is not zero, zero. You may want to back up and watch it again because if it's the first time you've seen it, this can be pretty confusing.